my beautiful people and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to be going through some of the examples for solving absolute value equations. Now, if you are in my class, this is something that we did in class. This is something we started in class. So I just wanted to go through some of the ones that I noticed that were giving you some trouble or giving you some hiccups. As always, I'm human. If I make a mistake, please let me know where the mistake occurs so that way I may learn from it. Let's go ahead and get started. So for example number one, we are checking up on our checklist here or our steps. Step number one is to isolate the absolute value expression. Basically what that means is get the absolute value symbol. So here if we scroll down here on our cheat sheet, basically what we want is we want this by itself. We want the absolute value symbol and we want the stuff inside alone. If it is attached, if there's anything on the outside, like maybe here or here, not on the opposite side of the equals, but if there's something here or on the other side, then we want to remove it. So looking at step number one or example number one, we notice that we have absolute value here. We have the inside stuff, which is B divided by eight. And so there's nothing attached to it. There's nothing on that side. Therefore, step number one is complete and you do not have to isolate anything. We wanna make sure to identify our note. If you get a negative when isolating the absolute value, you are done. Meaning, if the absolute value alone, without anything on the right or to the left of it, is equal to a negative number, if that is the case, therefore you are done and the answer is no solution. In this case, this absolute value is not equal to a negative number, so therefore we can continue. Step number two is asking us to create two separate equations. So I'm gonna do two separate ones. So I have one of them equal to a positive one and the other one equal to a negative one. I'm gonna multiply eight both sides here. I'm gonna separate these out. So that means B is equal to eight and B multiply eight by eight is equal to negative eight. Now we always have to check if I plug it back in, it must work. So for example, I have B over eight equal to one. So if I plug in positive eight, eight divided by eight is one. Absolute value of one is still one. So one equals one, that works out. So B equals eight is one of our answers. Now we do have to check the other one. The other one is uh, absolute value of B over eight equal to one. We're gonna plug in negative eight, negative eight divided by eight, that is equal to a negative one. Absolute value of a negative number is a positive, so I have one equals two one, therefore negative eight also works. Moving on to example number two, example number two. Step number one is to isolate the absolute value, get the absolute value by itself. So here's our absolute value, there's nothing to the right or to the left of it, the equals does not count. Since it is done, we are kind of done with step number one, we just need to pay attention to our note. For our note, it says, there it is, if you get a negative when isolating, isolating the absolute value, you are done and there's no solution. Meaning, if the absolute value is equal to a negative number, you are done, it doesn't work out. In this case, note that 15 is negative. Therefore, the absolute value is equal to a negative number and this is no solution. Moving on to example number three. Step number one is to isolate the absolute value. So here it is. We want the stuff inside by itself. Notice you have a negative five here or a minus five. So I'm going to add five to both sides. So I'm bringing down the absolute value. So I have X plus six. Here I have five, six, seven, eight. So a negative three. Now this here requires a check. If our isolated absolute value is equal to a negative number, that means we have no solution. It's not possible. So this one, for example, number three, also has no solution. Moving on to example number four. Example number four, here's our absolute value. Here's the inside. Attached to that is this negative four. And mathematicians are lazy, we learned that in my class. So because they are attached to this way, this is not a minus four, this is a negative four times the absolute value. So that being said, we need to get rid of this negative four by dividing both sides, not adding, but dividing, because we have a multiplication of negative four. My negatives go away, 
my fours go away, they get divided out. So I am left with absolute value of r plus 10. On my left hand side and on my right hand side, my negatives go away. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Now we do our check. Absolute value, here's my isolated absolute value is equal to 2. Since 2 is positive, we can now continue to step number 2 and create two separate equations, which is r plus 10 is equal to a positive 2 and r plus 10 equal to a negative 2. I'm going to subtract 10 both sides, getting that r is perhaps equal to a negative 8. Here, once again, I'm going to subtract 10, and once again, I get a potential answer of r equals to negative 12. How do we know if it's actually the answer? We're going to have to do our check. So I have negative 4 times the absolute value of r plus 10 is equal to potentially negative 8. We're going to check that and see if it works out. The first one we have to try is for a negative 8 here. If I have a negative 8 and I plug in uh, negative 8 into here, will it, it give me the answer I want? So negative 4 times negative 8 plus 10. See what that equals to? Negative 8 plus 10 is a positive 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. We're still having our multiplication of negative 4. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. That works out. It does equal to negative 8. So negative 8 is one of our solutions. we got to do one more check. So negative 4 times the absolute value of r plus 10 equal to maybe negative 8. So we're going to plug in negative 12 and see if that provides us with negative 8 as our output. So our input here is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 10 is a negative 2. I'm going to bring that up here. Absolute value of negative 2 is a positive 2. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Therefore, it does work out. So that means one of our solutions is that r is equal to negative 12, and the secondary solution is that r is equal to negative 8. Let's do one last example here. Step number one is to isolate the absolute value. I see two things. I see a times 6, which is negative. This negative belongs to the 6. It does not belong to the 10. This 10 is positive. It, mathematicians are lazy. There is a secret plus here, but because 10 is the first number that you see, typically we don't write pluses for the first numbers. So let's go ahead and isolate this. First, you got to get rid of the 10, so I'm going to subtract 10 both sides. 22 minus 10, that gives me a 12. Bringing down everything, I have 6 times the absolute value of 10 plus x. I'm going to divide by negative 6, divide by negative 6. I get absolute value of 10 plus x is equal to 6, uh, excuse me, 6 goes into 12 twice. I have 1 negative, so that is negative 2. Once again, here is my isolated absolute value. Here is a negative number. If an absolute value is equal to a negative number here, you don't have to continue. All you have to do is write no solution. All right, beautiful people. I hope this review has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.